In this topic, we will understand pricing. Now, pricing is a decision which is not squarely with product managers, but they do play a vital role in deciding the pricing strategy as well as a lot of times the final pricing as well. So what is price? Let's go get down to the fundamentals here. Price is the amount of money a buyer gives to a seller in exchange for goods or services. Very simple, right? And this is an aspect of the marketing mix. And we have just hyperlinked the micro marketing mix. Please have a look at that as well. And it helps in generating revenue, right? And price directly translates to the value of your product as perceived by your customers. Okay, so price is a very, very important metric in your product's success because it's also going to uh, psychologically indicate the value that this customer can derive from this product. And that is why a lot of times people have this perception that a higher price product might be actually better than a lower price product. And if you remember, like I said, a product is the carrier of value. So as you can imagine now, value is intrinsically connected with the price of the product. And so the product is a carrier of price in a way. Right? So there are three perspectives of pricing. One is the customer. The customer values, I mean, for the customer, the value is the perceived benefit minus the perceived cost. Right. So if you believe that this product is going to help me get, uh, save me maybe two months of time and my time is worth less a thousand dollars per month, then the benefit I'm going to get from this is about $2,000, but it, it is only going to cost me about $500. So it's a very, very good choice and I would go ahead and buy it. Right. So some of the perceived benefits are, for example, status. It's going to improve my status, my social status, my social standing. It's going to improve. Uh, it's going to make it much more convenient for me. Or uh, it's a very, very good deal. I would have got it otherwise for hundred dollars. I'm getting it for maybe fifty dollars right now. Uh, brand, the quality, the choice. There are a lot of benefits that you have to perceive, and you have to, and that you have to factor all of this in when you're deciding the prices. So, for example, the price of Rolex is about seventy-five hundred dollars. Right, and this is the price a buyer is willing to pay. While the cost of making a Rolex is approximately seven hundred and fifty dollars. So why is the buyer ready to pay ten times? Because the buyer perceives in Rolex um, a higher brand, a higher quality, a higher status, a higher durability, and that's why he's willing to pay ten times more. Right. The second perspective of pricing is the, is the society. So the economic health of society is governed by the price or it's a important factor that, you know, that uh, decides the economic health of society. So in a societal setting, the price is used to create an inclusive or exclusive effect, right? For example, in China, Russia, South Africa, healthcare is priced very high. And this creates an exclusive effect because only certain percentage of the society has access to healthcare. As compared to that, Denmark, Germany, and UK has healthcare uh, at a very, very affordable, very, very cheap price. And that is why it creates an inclusive effect because most, most of the society has access to healthcare. Right? So price can have an inclusive or exclusive effect. And lastly, the economy itself, right? I'm sure you all, almost all of you have, would have seen this diagram. So in the economic perspective, the buyer or the consumer is considered a rational decision maker. And this is a very, very important point that you need to remember. Rational decision maker. That is as per the economic theory. Okay. In reality, the buyer is not rational. And that's why a lot of times you will have to be a little funky with the price. Okay. So assumption is the buyer has all the relevant information. It's already assumed the buyer has all the relevant information. Therefore, if the price of a good or services, the service goes up, the demand for the product or services reduces and vice versa. So if for a rational decision maker, rational buyer who has all the relevant information, if you increase the price, the demand will go down. That is what is perceived. That is what the economic theory says. So in this graph, for example, when the uh, price is decreased by four points from $16. So 
So on the y axis is the dollars and on the x axis is Q, which is quantity. So when the price is decreased from $16 to $12, it leads to an increase in quantity by 20 points, right? So 20 more items are sold, units are sold, right? And similarly, you can see the other effect also that when you increase the quantity, sorry, the increase the price from $12 to let's say $16, the four points, it also results in a decrease in quantity by 20 units. Right. So what is the marketer's perspective of pricing or uh, your perspective as a product manager? Well, this perspective is important in understanding, uh, you know, in, it helps in understanding customers. And that's why it helps in understanding uh, in putting up the right price. Right. So marketer would assess the value that a consumer sees in the product. So what is the perceived benefit? What is the perceived value in, uh, that the consumer is seeing? Right. And this will help in assessing the right price. Should I, for example, the marketer will make a choice that should I, uh, um, so if I have spent $500 to build this unit of product, should I, should I receive $500 in one go or I'm okay getting this money $500 over 10 months or over three months or over five months. And so I can take $100 per month, I can get $50 per month or I can take the entire money upfront depending on what the consumer sees in the product, okay? So this assessment then assists in setting the price, okay? What can influence the market, a marketer's perspective or your perspective? For example, you can, you can be influenced by substitutes. You can be influenced by competitors, the foreign and domestic competitors. For example, you might have a very good product, but uh, China is able to produce a very good knockoff at a very, very affordable price, in which case now you have to take a call. How much of a premium do you expect people to perceive in your product to pay you that much? If you have built a very, very awesome brand, then perhaps it will be okay. It will be easier for you to launch a premium brand. But if you're not, then tough luck. For example, in India, there's a car company called Maruti Suzuki, which is known for making cheap cars or affordable cars. And they have tried their luck so many times in, in creating premium cars, which can sell in the, uh, you know, in the uh, category B, category C category, uh, you know, which is somewhere in the range of about $20,000 to about uh, $40,000. But Maruti has just not been able to create much of a dent in that space. While there are some certain other cars which sell very comfortable in that space. So what are the objectives when you're pricing something? Your, your objective is, and this will help you in deciding the strategy, okay? Whether it is a survival, right? So you're simply looking to generate revenue, that's it. So if revenue drops, the product and consequently the company will no longer survive. So this is pretty much important for a company which is uh, run on a services basis or company which doesn't have any external funding. It's purely dependent on the revenues. Right. So, so even if uh, there is a small loss, it's okay to take because I will at least get revenues to survive another day. Next is profit. So survival and sustainability of a product is directly linked to profit. Right. So I need to get make profit on every single uh, unit that I'm selling. A unit can be time unit. That could unit can be an actual physical unit. That unit could be a software unit or a, or anything else. Uh, another objective could be sales, right? So uh, you just want to acquire, you just want to do a lot of sales. It's okay to, uh, I'm, I'm okay to not make a profit, but I want to do a lot of sales. This is, uh, this is, this has been one of the most common complaints for almost all the e-commerce or recently funded startup companies that they do a lot of sales, but they are not generating any profit. Why? Because they're trying to acquire market share, which is the point of the next one. So you are just trying to acquire market share. And that is why you are okay with selling at a discounted price. Right. And then there are other strategies like, you know, uh, uh, price scraping and price uh, penetration pricing and so on, which are little advanced topics on how exactly pricing can be done. Right. And finally, there is image that you want to communicate that this product is the premium most and that's why you want to price it very high. 
okay so whatever your strategy be ultimately you will decide whether you are doing cost uh, you're doing cost plus um, uh, you know you're doing a cost plus uh, pricing or you're doing value plus pricing what is the difference cost plus pricing is basically you calculated that okay it takes me it costs me hundred dollars to make this product so that is a cost for me and so I'm going to sell it at a 20% or 40% markup right so this is good for commodity based prices uh, commodity based products or where the competition is very very high especially in, and as you can imagine in a commodity based product competition will typically be very high a value plus pricing or value minus pricing is where you're not looking at what is the cost of uh, building the product but the value that the buyer is going to get and this is much more applicable for uh, products where it's very difficult to ascertain the cost of the product uh, uh, from the from the customer's lens and that is why uh, you know value plus works better for example doctor's uh, uh, fee the better the doctor is you will just perceive that this person is better so i'm okay giving him anything he was asking for just treat me well right so that's it for now thank you